Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our uh, little reunion meeting. And uh, this morning or this evening, depending on where you are, uh, Bobby uh, Shirk Sugihara is going to give a presentation on thatch. So uh, go ahead. Uh, let me, I'm going to do what I said to do. I'm going to maybe do speaker view. Okay, before before we, before we I start, I want to say one thing. I'd like to correct my bio data a little bit there, Diane. Okay. Okay, I have three kids. Three, three okay. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. <laughs> so, right. right, I thought the daughter had been disowned or something last, uh, last <laughs> night. Okay, I got two it. Daughters. <laughs> two daughters. Two daughters, one's in Korea. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Shall I start? You may start. Okay. Share screen. Um, manuscript, second draft. Show you. And remember, okay. you can zoom in and out uh, yeah, down at that bar at the bottom. Yes, I know. Okay, I'm I'm hoping this goes smoothly. I'm going to have to keep zooming in and out and shifting pages and things like that. I'm using a publisher, not um, what is it they always use? PowerPoint. PowerPoint. I'm not using PowerPoint. I'm using publisher, so I have to kind of adjust it myself, which takes a little more time. I'm hoping that I can get through it in about 45 minutes. Um, I've never done this before. So bear with me when it doesn't work right. OK. Um, how it all started. I was working as a translator. And to keep myself from going crazy, I was writing part-time uh, articles for a magazine that let me have my own column and write about what I wanted to. I called it Back Roads, and it was about, oh, rural things that were happening or traditional things that were still happening in the area of Western Tokyo, where I live in Hachioji. <clears throat> And in that context, I got interested in rice, how rice straw is used. And it's used for handicrafts and making household implements for religious decorations and for in building crafts. So of course I wanted to see a straw roof. Everybody talks about straw roofs. We were just talking about straw roofs too. Okay. So I got the opportunity when this house, the Koma house, was being rethatched in Hidaka in Saitama. Um, the Koma house belongs to the priest of the Koma shrine. They came from Koguryo 14 or 1500 years ago. So it, it still has connections to Korea and to Japan's imperial family, if anybody's interested. Anyway, with no knowledge whatsoever, about thatch or thatching. I just simply went into the sat site and asked permission to photograph and get interviews. And the foreman was very obliging because he too was trying to make a video record of the work for whoever might be available to be available to rethatch the roof in later years. Because at this point, Japanese thatch was on the verge of dying out. Um, <clears throat> these were the thatchers on the job. Um, the head of the group was this gentleman who was 65 years old at the time. The oldest was 80. Um, they had originally been members of separate groups in the area, but as the number of houses, thatched houses dwindled, the number of thatchers dwindled, then they banded together in this group and called themselves the Urawa Higashigumi. They're based in Urawa in Saitama Prefecture. <clears throat> When I, the first, lesson, the first lesson I learned on this site is that um, thatch is not straw, but miscanthus, which is it's sometimes called eulalia. You may have heard of it as referred to as eulalia. It's a long grass that grows on the hillsides and many other places. And rice, unlike Korea, rice straw is not used on the roof itself. It's used for rope and you'll see it everywhere any my photographs. Um, yep. And when I learned that the Thatcher's skills would enable this mountain of grass to last for 20 years or longer, 
I really felt compelled to learn more and try to document what they were doing as well as possible. And eventually I began to realize that I had to be on site when things were happening rather than relying on interviews. And I quit all my translation work that had strict deadlines and so that I could get gain mobility. <clears throat> okay, to put Thatch in something of a context because I think most Americans don't really know much about Thatch. Um, um, it, I, I believe that originally that Thatch never existed in the United States except with the early settlers. Well, this, I found that later is different, but in Europe, Thatch is very common. And although in some places it seems to be in danger of dying out, it has revived with the rise of environmental concerns. And it's very common now in England and Holland and Denmark. Um, <clears throat> in England, I was just astounded to see these houses, row houses, thatched. This one over here is a different roof, but this is thatched, this one's thatched. And <clears throat> in Japan, this is not legal. The, our fire laws will not, our fire laws will not allow this yet. <clears throat> in Holland, they're making um, whole de housing developments that are thatched and using thatching techniques to side public buildings, the kinds of techniques they used to use on thatching windmills. Many countries have national thatching associations. Let's see down here. Here. Um, the International Thatching Society was founded in 2011, and it held its sixth meeting in Japan in 2019. Uh, Bobby, could you make that a little bigger? It's very bigger? hard to read. Okay. Great. Good. Okay, that's Max. Um, <clears throat> it, it it's you know it has data about the number of thatched houses and the and these kinds of topics. The countries involved are the UK, the Netherlands, Sweden, Denmark, Germany, South Africa, this one's Japan, and uh, France is expected to join in before the next meeting. Hmm. You might note Japan is the only country that does not import thatching material. Hmm. They're um, importing it from Eastern Europe, Tur Turkey, Hungary, China. And I was just told yesterday by a thatcher, the thatch from China, that he's using in Holland is very good, very easy to work with. Well, all right. You know, uh, Bobby, when you say thatch, what are you referring to exactly? You're referring to different kinds of straw, are you not? It's not straw. I'm so you're just you referring to this, just referring to this one species of grass that, that's used in Japanese thatch. What, thatch so all of, all of the thatch in all of these countries apparently. is the same material, is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying it's the same material. Oh, I'm not saying it's the same material. I'm saying it's not straw. It's, no, it, it's not straw in any case. So what are some case, of the other kinds? Straw. What are some of the other kinds of material? I, I'll, I'll talk about that later. Okay, okay. okay. <clears throat> anyway, um, I've, I've got some examples here of European thatch. Wait a minute, I've got to get this off. Let's see what I'm doing. Okay. Um, this is a traditional thatched house in Germany that's just been rethatched. And this one, this is a brand new house in Corf Castle in England. In this area, they um, require that 10% of new housing be thatched. This is a nice new thatched roof in Denmark on a traditional house that I got from one of my Facebook friends in, in Denmark. And this one huh. is in Michigan. Huh. And apparently there is thatch all over the country and that there is a movement afoot to make thatch a viable building material in the United States. So I don't know, it'd be interesting to see what happens. Okay, now let's look at Korea. And Korea <laughs> uses straw for thatch. And the, this is the kind of thatched house that we knew when we were there. 
like this. This is in the folk village in Chalanando, <clears throat> near, near my son-in-law's hometown. <clears throat> and they thatch with straw, with rice straw, and then change the top layer every two or three years because it deteriorates very, very quickly. Hmm. Hmm. And I, I've seen them work on the ridge. They kind of braid it together and lay it, but I have no idea how the under layers are thatched or how they're attached to the roof or anything. And if anybody has pictures of them rethatching a house and hmm. would be willing to share them with me, I would be delighted to have them. And these are pictures from Chejudo that Frank sent me. And this is what convinced me to do this presentation. Um, <clears throat> I looked at this on screen and I said, that doesn't look like rice straw. And between Frank's wife and my daughter, I was finally able to learn that rice isn't grown on Chejudo, or at least not very much. And the material used is a short grass called tea. And it's, it's related to a grass that we use sometimes in Okinawa, but not <clears throat> in the rest of the country anymore. It's a, it's a fairly short grass. It's only a foot or two tall, but it's, it's a soft kind of thatch. But these are pretty. Um, the the uh, bindings also, the way they hold it down in Chejudo is also different from the mainland. As you notice, this just has these ropes across. And this is kind of a net, which I guess is stronger when the wind blows. Okay, Japan. Mm. There you have a map of Japan. People who are familiar with Japan don't need this, and those who are not need to know that Japan stretches from 45 degrees latitude, which in comparison with the United States is like this. So that down here, Okinawa is not even in the United States. <laughs> yes, it is, it's in Hawaii. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> this gives us a very wide range of climates. Um, and as you can see, there are very high mountains all the way down the Ar archipelago. Um, this makes for beautiful scenery, fantastic hot springs, lots and lots of earthquakes, and occasional volcanic eruptions, which have nothing to do with thatch, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, fire, fire. <laughs> yeah, fire. They're not fireproof. Um, this side of the country, on the Japan Sea side, gets a great deal of snow in winter. Sometimes, this last winter, they had like four meters in some places. Mm -hmm. They get a tremendous amount of snow. Um, and even down here, they get a lot of snow in winter. And in winter, this side of the country, the Pacific side is very, very dry. However, when summer starts to come, you get the summer monsoon and then any number of typhoons. And this area in particular gets a tremendous amount of rain. So these climat climatic differences do pertain to thatch. Okay. Um, this is a diagrammatic schematic thing that was designed for the International Thatching Society meeting that shows the different types of houses um, in different areas of Japan. I'm going to break this down by the Northeast and Southwest and show you some of my pictures of what these look like. Okay, this is an Ainu house. It's thatched on the walls as well as the roof. Um, it has a, 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 a sunken hearth in the middle and they say that it's very, very warm in winter but I don't think anybody lives in these anymore. They're used for events. You see them on television. This is in a, a, an outdoor museum, but nobody's living in them anymore. <clears throat> okay, going a little farther down to Iwate Prefecture, if you looked at the, the map that I had uh, sent to you, um, 
This is called a, a magardia or a, a bent house. And this kind of design is, ah, what am I doing? Excuse me, okay. Um, <clears throat> this is common in the Northeastern prefectures. Livestock was kept in one wing of the house and there'd be a hearth in the middle to keep everybody warm. <clears throat> This is a no stage in Iwate that's thatched. I, I just happened upon it. It's in a shrine and it's still used for no performances and other events. This is also in Iwate. They have a, the roof is planted with um, flowers and other kinds of plants that <laughs> put down deep roots and this strengthens the ridge. And they say that the owner can tell the state of the thatch on the roof from the state of the flowers on the on the ridge so he doesn't have to climb up to look at it every year I, I don't know if that's entirely true but um that's what i was told fukushima some of you who've been to japan may have been here um this is it's ochijuku it's it's very it's a well-known tourist spot uh, people live in all of the houses and uh, rent rooms to tourists and otherwise cater to the tourist industry. Um, these, this community in the past 20 years has made a tremendous effort to preserve their roofs and the thatching skills. They, they've opened, they raised their own um, miscanthus and uh, have opened a thatching training school for the community members so that people who can thatch their own houses. And if they get real good at it, they go out to other areas in the winter time and thatch other places and get some money. Okay. People who follow me on Facebook have seen this when it was being restored. This is in Saitama. And this house also had space for a horse or something on here. But um, <clears throat> the people who own it, the Yoshida family, they. Uh, operate a small restaurant and a souvenir shop. And occasionally the whole performance is musical performances and things inside here. They come down to Tokyo. Uh, this is about 15 minutes drive from my house. It's a huge temple. And in the mountains of Western Tokyo, you get this construction. Um, it developed when the silk industry was thriving and there's still a fair number of them around. This one is an, an onsen, a, a hot spring, and used as uh, inns and whatnot. A very complicated kind of construction. Um, and this is in Machida. In Tokyo, it's a it's a, a clinic. The doctor still yeah he has office hours here. The house, the design of the house itself indicates that this family was very important in the area. This is a vestibule, reserved for high-ranking visitors. It has this kind of this uh, decoration at the top, which I tried to get a picture of. It's not awfully good, but um, carve a auspicious. Chinese character in the in the in the uh, peak of the ridge, and design. I think this is probably bamboo. That's maybe not bamboo. I'm not sure what that is, but anyway, it's been painted white, and and just make kind of decorative ornaments on it. Okay. From Tokyo, let's go out into the hills. This is Nagano, not Nagano, this is Yamanashi. <coughs> Here's my thing. Um, thatching has become very expensive. So when it begins to deteriorate and the owner can't afford to get it repaired properly, it's covered with metal. <coughs> We've been calling this canned thatch because the original thatch stays on the roof and keeps the, and the maintains the roof structure and the design 
so that someday it can be rethatched. Um, canned thatch can be seen throughout the countryside, uh, everywhere. And in some places now, university students and civic groups who are involved in rural revitalization projects are starting to rethatch some of these under the direction of particularly our younger thatchers. <clears throat> Or canned thatch. This is up in the mountains in Nagano. <clears throat> it's everywhere. <laughs> and when I first saw it, I thought it was just horrible, but I, I've changed my mind. It's canned thatch. Someday it'll be back to life again. Okay, Western Japan now. These are dashozukuri. Um, the name dashozukuri means praying hands, the whole hand held together like this. And that's where it gets the name of the, the name of the satire. This is in, they're both in a collective uh, UNESCO um, World Heritage Site. The, 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 uh, historic villages of Shirakawa and Gokayama. They're only about 40 minutes apart by car and they have a lot of similarities. So that um, <clears throat> UNESCO has lumped them together, but when it comes to the roofs, um, <clears throat> the only similarities are the size, the ridge design and the, and the, the, the uh, name, they're very different. And, it's Gokayama is what I know best. Let's see a little bigger. <clears throat> this is where I've spent months <laughs> in the field. And Shirakawa, which I have also spent time on a thatching site, but have not organized the, the photographs ever at all. Okay. Uh, from there. We go down to near Lake Biwa. This, this roof would be thatched with reed from Lake Biwa. And this on the corners, that green stuff is um, netting that's put on to the, keep birds from stealing the thatch. <clears throat> this is a typical traditional thatched roof in Nara. The, uh, bundles of thatch across the ridge are there to protect the, the ropes. And this style can be seen in many different designs throughout Western Japan, but not, not very much in, in uh, Eastern Japan. Next. Uh, this is a hand thatch roof in Ohara near Kyoto. <laughs> Whoops, sing that up. Um, Kyoto has, uh, Ohara has an enormous number of thatched roofs. Now, almost all of them are canned at this point. This one is also there. And this one's in very bad shape. You can see the sways, the, the pieces here that hold down the thatch. And when they are exposed, then the ropes get exposed and deteriorate and it starts to leak. <laughs> Okay, um, this is Japan's oldest thatched roof. It was built, an oldest thatched house. The roof, of course, has been repaired an infinite number of times. It was built in the 14th century. Um, <clears throat> it's located in Kobe, which has the largest number of thatched houses of any community in the country. It has over 700 of them. It used to have twice that many, that many about 25 years ago. And now the city is taking very active steps to preserve the ones that are left and have people use them. <clears throat> and this one's in Okayama. This is a guest house. We stayed here. We had the bundled thatch over the ridge. Let's go to this one. This is in Kyushu, 
<coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I was afraid my short was not going to cooperate and it's not. Okay. Um, this is called the divided ridge stuff. Mm -hmm. Pardon? Oh, divided ridge style. Um, the, the living quarters and the kitchen and the stables and guest quarters are all in separate structures. And it's done this way for one thing to keep the house a little cooler in summer because it's a very hot area, but also to uh, avoid very high roofs that would be uh, vulnerable to uh, earthquakes. This is the one that is not my photograph. It's off the internet. I have one I can't find, which makes me very chagrined. This is one my husband took for me in Okinawa. Again, very low roof um, <clears throat> and covered with um, netting. And I suppose part of the purpose of all of this is to prevent it from getting blown away from um, in typhoons. Bobby, what kind of tool do they use to make it so smooth? In that uh, previous I'll, I'll, one, I'll show you. I'll show you later. Okay. Okay. I, I, yep. I'll get into that. Okay. Yep. I'm going to talk about materials, and then I'm going to show you how they do it a little. So then you'll see what kind of tools they use. Okay. <coughs> excuse, excuse me for one minute. There's me. Mute, 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 mute me. I'm sorry, my morning frog is not very cooperative. Okay, I want to talk about the materials. Um, apart from the differences in design that you've seen so far, <clears throat> geographic conditions dictate what materials can be used. Bamboo is generally used in most of the <laughs> But bam bamboo suitable for roof frames does not grow in the north or in areas where that have tremendous amounts of snow. In these places, wood is used. Um, here are two roofs that <coughs> have the uh, frames made of wood. This is in a museum in Iwate, and they have very clearly made a great effort to make straight straight rafters and straight purlins from using natural branches. Um, I suspect that this was repaired after the earthquake. And it's not been, there's some things about it that make me wonder if the Thatcher knew what he was doing. But uh, anyway, this is the house where I always stay when I go to Bokayama, where they, these are things that are anything but straight. And for the purlins and the bra diagonal braces, they split logs vertically. So they're, they're just kind of strange shapes. And then the diagonal things are woven under and over the purlins. And this is a device to prevent, uh, to pull the roof back when it sways in high winds or in earthquakes. <clears throat> uh, you might also notice that both of these roofs have mats over the frame. <clears throat> in Gokayama, these mats were once used for silkworm culture. Um, with, of course, silk has long since died out as an industry. But the, the mats have been saved and are reused time and again for as long as they'll hold up. This prevents the thatch from dribbling down into the roof. <clears throat> okay. I'll go to Saitama. <clears throat> this is a brand new house. It has just a, a brand new roof 
new Saitama. <coughs> it's on a house that was dismantled and moved to a new location. Here, the thatcher is attaching the bamboo purlins to the wooden uh, roof truss. And then the underside of the roof in Saitama, again, bamboo um, <coughs> rafters, bamboo purlins, and these thin, thin strips of split bamboo that are put on at fairly close intervals to keep the thatch from falling down into the roof. And if you look carefully, you'll, you'll see that <coughs> the uh, purlins and the rafters are attached, the, the uh, ropes are attached at different angles. And this is another device to help the roof pull back when it shifts in, a, in a, an earthquake. Here are two roofs under repair in Gokayama. This one is a normal sized Gokayama roof. <coughs> it's the same one I showed you earlier. Um, this one is one of the largest houses in the area. And the bindings are renewed as necessary on these roofs. Um, the ones on the upper roof are using rice straw rope. And occasionally here at the bottom, they've got some wire on it, but they, <clears throat> they try not to use wire because it damages the uh, wood and the wood then rots. Um, the purlins and the rafters are not replaced unless they're really badly damaged. <clears throat> On this roof, this is this huge house is a national cultural property. It means it gets a very nice budget for heat thatching. Um, and here they're using both rice straw rope and something called nestle, which are hazel branches that have been twisted and pounded on the ground to make the fibers plant. And once this um, dries, it's, it's very hard, it lasts a long time. And in the past, it was probably used more frequently, but now it, it requires so much work and so many man hours that uh, it's expensive. So that uh, it's only used on well-budgeted well roofs. <clears throat> okay, binding materials. This is getting out in the woods, getting nestled. The, the, um, hazel branches that grow in the woods all over the place. And, and they, if they har they're harvested regularly, they can get them the right size. This is a rice straw rope, which obviously originates in rice paddies. It's getting very difficult to get good rice straw rope <clears throat> because the farmers are to want to grow shorter stemmed varieties and then they want to harvest with a combine and plow it all underneath. Um, and so that it's getting good rope is very important for the thatchers because they have to pull it very hard. That's a matter of life and death, whether this rope is good or not. I know one that one rope dealer who is growing his own rice to make good rope. <clears throat> and that's now, miscanthus, this is the material that they're using for the thatch, okay? <clears throat> Charlie, you see it? Um, this is the most common uh, thatching material nationwide. It grows about two to three meters high. That's about nine, six to nine meters high, feet high. It has a pithy stem. Uh, this particular bundle <clears throat> came from what is said to be the country's largest and finest kayaba, kaya field, that thatch field, at the foot of Mount Fuji. It can grow just about anywhere though. And there are many varieties of this grass. 
that are found throughout the country, and they're similar grasses that are also used as kaya, or thatch. <clears throat> and now thatching materials are beginning to draw academic attention. I hope eventually that some valuable information about varieties and durability will emerge. I doubt that I'll be able to understand it when it <laughs> comes out, but uh, it's necessary. And here you see miscanthus laid on the roof. And uh, I'm talking about sways. These are the these are the sways, the horizontal things. And it, those bamboo and miscanthus. <clears throat> this is the um, fact material used in Gokayama. It's called kariyasu. Um, it's related to miscanthus, but it's a, it's a different variety. It, um, <clears throat> It's thinner, it's shorter, it has hollow stems that shed water well and make it more durable than the thicker variety. It's also considerably lighter weight. Um, but it only grows on high mountains in central Japan on steep slopes like this. That's me. Uh, they harvest it, lay it out to dry for half a day or so. At the end of the day, they collect it and bundle it roll it down the mountainside to the road and then it's trucked to a storage shed. <clears throat> oh, wait. This is water reed. Um, <clears throat> reed makes a very durable thatch, but it lacks the soft feeling of other grasses. In Japan, it grows in lakes and estuaries and it's usually harvested and transported by boat here you see reed being laid on the roof. This is in Saitama. The roof as a whole was thatched with miscanthus, but the thatcher decided to use reed for the outermost edge of the north side, which tends to deteriorate, deteriorate more rapidly than the rest, and then reinforced it with cryptomeria mark for extra waterproofing in hopes that it would last as long as possible because as he often said, nobody knows when there'll be somebody around to thatch it next time. <clears throat> this is a bundle uh, on the left side, a bundle of cryptomeria bark. This is used in many ways in roofs all over the country. It has to be carefully peeled off of fallen logs by hand. So like good rice straw rope, it's becoming hard to get because the lumber companies usually blast it off with high pressure hoses. And that shown here is not particularly good quality either. Good quality bark costs something like $550 for 10 square meters. Expensive stuff. <clears throat> this is bamboo grass, Kumazasa. It grows in the mountains, it grows on the well along roadsides. Thatching a roof with it is very rare today. <clears throat> and at the time I visited this site, it was supposed it was said to be the only extant example, although since then others have been found and are being maintained. Um, <clears throat> this project was carried out by a group of university students who were working on rural community revitalization. And a couple of young thatchers were there to provide trained labor and learn the, te the techniques for bamboo thatching from the older thatcher. But everybody else was students and the teacher and the scaffolding was a mess. So I made my, I put myself in, th in charge of the scaffolding to clean it up. Okay, <clears throat> let me show you some procedures and the finished roofs in Kokayama and Saitama. They're, <clears throat> Basically, thatching means making a frame of some sort, laying some kind of grass on it, and then anchoring the grass to the frame securely and tightening the entire structure. And how this is done, what other materials are added, depends on geographical, climatic, and cultural factors, not only in Japan, but everywhere. Um, Okayama, and, which is an isolated mountainous region, Again, let me start again. 
uh, uh, Okayama and Saitama provide good examples of contrasting thatching methods and finished roofs. Um, Toyama is an isolated, Gokayama is an isolated mountainous rural area in Toyama on the, pre, on the Japan seaside of the country. And Saitama is a relatively flat prefecture on the Pacific side of the country that has easy access to urban centers. Um, I can't go into much detail here. And if anybody's interested in seeing these in greater depth, follow me on Facebook, Facebook because I'm slowly putting up um, pictures of thatching in progress. This is what I was taking pictures of. Okay. This is the diamond. Uh, you've already seen the, the roof frame. <clears throat> um, now let's look at the laying thatch on them. This is the barge the outside of the triangle, right? <clears throat> um, this sets the thickness and the slope of the roof of the roof plane. It's, that, it's thatched first, and it looks kind of like a giant caterpillar crawling up the roof. <clears throat> and the finished roof will be about 60 centimeters thick with a slope of about 60 degrees. And this round barge is unique to Gokayama. It does not exist anywhere else in Japan. And I, as far as I've been able to find out, it doesn't exist anyplace else in the rest of the world either. Uh, <clears throat> here they're attaching the first layer. You see the, the mats are already on. This is the very first row. Um, in Gokayama, they use hemp stems for the very, the very under the first row underneath. It, it makes a very attractive uh, eaves. It's very white, very, very, very nice looking. Um, hemp was once grown for cloth and using the stems was economical. It made sense to use them this way. Nowadays, of course, hemp production is under strict government control. So the stems have become very expensive. And uh, these are, the old ones are saved up and reused again and again and again, as long as possible. <clears throat> and then up here on the uh, right-hand side, you have them laying tying that down a layer of thatch using hazel rods. <clears throat> the, the rod is pointed ahead of time, they carve it to a point. And then somebody has to jam the point into the adjacent layer of thatch. Somebody else is holding down the top end of the branch because they're recalcitrant. And somebody is trying to stabilize and adjust the material at the same time. Um, there's probably somebody like this lady here holding the rope <clears throat> that's going to be threaded through a needle and forced through the thatch and back up again and not knotted. And somebody to, with a mallet who's going to pound that knot and somebody with another mallet who will dress the edge of it. It's a very um, labor intensive um, task that requires a lot of hands. In Saitama, however, <clears throat> um, each thatcher is in charge of a section of the roof and does all the necessary tasks on the surface himself. Um, like the barge in Gokayama, the corner determines the thickness and angle of the roof and is laid first. And then the, uh, the first part of a row and then the row of thatch is laid out from that, um, intentively anchored down with ropes and then uh, held down with bamboo swathes. <clears throat> Here's a thatcher with a homemade bamboo needle who's threading the rope through the thatch. And I think it looks here as if he's bringing it back up, actually. Somebody underneath unthreads it, wraps the, the rope around the um, purlin or, or whatever, and um, 
then resets it, and he has to pull it back up. And then once a row is completed, everybody available gets together like this, and they pull on the ropes and stomp on it in unison. Rather dramatic finish to a row of thatch. Okay. <clears throat> now, they work their way up the roof, and then they do the ridge. And this is a ridge in Okayama. Um, <clears throat> they split chestnut poles. They're inserted below the ridge, fastened under the roof uh, uh, near the top of the truss. So they slant downwards on the, on the outside. So they're from the outside. Actually, I get buried. It's so buried in fact, you can hardly see it. But from the inside, if you see it, it's, it's at a, an angle like this to prevent uh, water from seeping in. <clears throat> then thatch is laid horizontally across the roof. It's covered with sheet metal and weighted down with more split chestnut logs. And then this is a little difficult to see. Let me get it as big as, as possible. There are wires across the, the uh, whole thing here that are leaped, those poles that were originally initially inserted. The wire is looped around the poles and then across the top of the roof uh, around the pole on the other side and then uh, twisted together. And I'm not exactly sure what the, the knots on the top are, are doing, but I think it's to keep the poles and the wire from shifting. The ridge in, in Saitama, however, is a much more complicated affair. Gokayama's ridges are all the same. But in Saitama, there are many different kinds of ridges. I've seen these thatchers do ridges on um, religious structures and a box ridge, a, a wooden ridge with a tile on top. And then on, you know, on this job, they did a, a, the ridge with bamboo. <clears throat> which is very common in, in the Saitama area. And the, first of all, the uh, kaya, the thatch is piled high, and bent over the top of the ridge from both sides and then tied down tightly. And then the whole thing is covered with cryptomeria bark, which you can see peeking out here. And then this arrangement of bamboo poles, a single large bamboo pole on top, and that this is split bamboo, and there'll be another um, large bam split bamboo pole over the ends of these to hold them down. The whole thing is uh, strung together with um, copper wire. Okay, once they finish the ridge, they start working their way down. <clears throat> and in Gokayama, as everywhere. They check to make sure that um, <clears throat> the roof surface is tight and even, and whether it, there seems to be not quite enough thatch, they're going to add some more. And what he's doing is bending this, this thatch, shoving it into the roof as far as it'll go, then he'll pound it in and chop it off and with, with, to make it even, make the surface even. <clears throat> and this is what you were asking me about. In, in Gokayama, they pound it with this thing and all, working the way down, all the way down, just keep pounding and pounding and pounding and um, checking for loose ends. And he's, cu he's cutting off some loose ends here. Mm. But um, the roof is pounded into shape at every stage, all the way up and all the way down. Um, but the roof as a whole is not trimmed to any extent. In Saitama, however, um, not only do they add extra thatch, like just as in Gokayama, this thatcher has his own special tool for lifting the thatch and, and 
but I'm adding more. And then they work down the roof, pounding it with these things. These are, these are the roof pounders and cutting it quite a bit. With Thatcher's shears. And they did this all the way down. Um, I'd like to show you another Saitama roof that was larger and got some real heavy pounding. Okay, Diane? <laughs> but also a lot of very uh, detailed trimming. Here, there's maybe this, some of it had gotten in too far, and so he's pulling it out, and then he's going to have to even it with the rest of that um, eave. And kind of sculpting places like this, so beautiful, beautiful, beautifully sculpted roofs of Saitama. And finished roofs, this is one, in, the one in Gokayama. <clears throat> the first roof I, I showed you, you may have noticed, was done in sections. And this is the way it used to be done in the past because of, of the availability of kaya. But now all the village kaya is pooled and the entire side of the roof is thatched at one time, which eliminates the joins between sections because they require a lot of kaya, a lot of work, and a weak spot in the roof. <coughs> and Saitama, a beautifully sculpted roof. Uh, okay, do, how, do we have enough time to talk some more? Should I end here? Well, Bobby, it's been an hour. It's been a, almost an hour, a couple well, then, of minutes. Then, then I won't talk about our thatching renaissance. <laughs> okay, well, well, if, if you want to briefly uh, make some a couple comments about it, that'll be all right. Okay, let's just say that um, when I first started doing this, um, which was in 1997, and most of my materials from 1997 to 2006, uh, everybody thought Japanese thatch was going to die out, including the thatchers. And uh, at the time, the average age of thatchers was over 70. But today, Japanese thatch is exciting. And it's it's appearing in the in the newspapers on television, in S S N S. It's on every day. Something comes up every day. Events are being held and stuff. There are a lot of young people have gotten involved, and though there's not nearly as many Thatchers as there used to be, there are only about two hundred now, including about ten women. Um, the median age is thirty five, and the um, active Thatchers who run their own companies and train new personnel. Are about 50 years old. So it's quite ho help hopeful that this is going to revive. And I won't go into the details of that, but um, I'm excited about what's going to happen now. Okay. Let me finish. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Oh, that, 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 I do have one more thing I do. I must show you what, what happened. What did I do? Get down here, my very, very end. Hi. Thank you for listening. Oh, that's me. <laughs> that's Bobby, the Thatcher. That's me. <laughs> that's me. Would, would you like to entertain a few questions, uh, Bobby? Sure. No problem. How, now, how do I, how do I, or maybe I should keep the pictures up in case one of the people want to go back to them. Okay. Sure. Right, people can minimize the picture on their screen uh, on their screen if they want by dragging to, you know, to the left, or at least I can do that on my uh, Mac. Yeah. Okay. You know, you can just drag the the photo of Bobby thatching off to the left, and <laughs> and you know, so you can see everybody if you switch back to gallery view. So, uh, floor is open for questions uh, to Bobby. Hi, Mike Flynn. Okay, let's let's. He's got. A, he's he's muted. 
No, he. I just saying hi to him. I don't know if he has a question or not. <laughs> I have a question, Bonnie Hurley here. Um, one of your pictures showed a thatched roof peak about three levels down with a turtle. Yeah. What does that mean? Was it a real turtle or is? It oh no, no, of course not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's a decoration. Just a decoration. Decoration, and I, it, I, I'm sure it has some kind of significance, longevity, or protection. Okay. Sort, but I don't, I don't know exactly what, what the significance. Somebody else might know, actually. And actually, actually, the one on the top looks like it's for longevity. Yeah. And down below looks like an onigawara, which are are supposedly uh, they they eat fire. They're they're a protection yeah. that's put on the temples. Thank you. What, what about the turtle? Do you have any ideas? I just wondered about it. Yeah. Oh, the turtle. I didn't see the turtle. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Turtle. Turtles represent long life, I believe. Yes. Yeah, it's right here. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Can you see it? I, I've enlarged it. Nice. Cool. Oh, yeah. Right, right here. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bobby, about how often would uh, people have to rethatch their uh, homes or their uh, buildings? Um, nowadays, the um, Cultural Affairs Agency estimates twenty years. Twenty years. Twenty years. The the roof in Saitama at the Koma Shrine is done every twenty years. Um, in the past. When they were, when they had open hearth cooking, and and open hearth heating, and you got lots of smoke, it would last twice as long. And the very thick roofs, like in in uh, Shirakawa, sixty years. But Isn't that, but that that that's not possible now. Isn't the shrine at Issei changed uh, every 20 years? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Bobby, a question that I raised uh, much earlier toward the beginning of the presentation when you were showing uh, thatching traditions in uh, other parts of the world, particularly in Europe. Yeah. Um, you were, I, was, I was interested in what kinds of materials they use. I, I think of, you know, going back to medieval times, um thatch thatching was very common throughout europe and you know i think of pictures from of, of houses from uh, the elizabethan period in england uh when thatch roofs were dominant yeah. um what kinds of materials were being used then and are being used now i don't know ah, okay. I, can, I can't answer that um i know a lot of water reed is used in england Wheat straw. Wheat straw. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Since but wheat was the common. The things that are product. imported, um, I'm not sure whether whether what what they're importing, um, and the thatch that's used in South Africa is different from what's used in Europe. By that much, I do know, but I don't know exactly what it is, or. Uh, where they're importing it from, also South, um, other parts of Africa, America. Okay. You know, I, I really don't know about you, Bobby. Yeah. Where are your current um, interests in exploring more about thatch going? <laughs> um, well, I'll tell you. I, I I no longer feel safe climbing the roofs. So I'm going on site to take pictures. What a <laughs> anybody else here want to volunteer to climb the roof? <laughs> I did. I did. A lot a lot of my pictures from Gokayama, I was right up there with them. I know. We um, saw you. Pardon? We saw pardon? you on the roofs. Yes. Yeah. Um, but are you going to do more research on this or what? Well, I 
before the pandemic began, um, I was getting interested in how their financing was revival. Yes. Who's paying for it and uh, how secure the financial sources are. And then came the pandemic. So I can't go anywhere for interviews. And I, I you know, you can't go anywhere. So I started dragging out my old pictures and scanning them because most of my stuff is on slides and prints. And that's what I'm doing right now. And okay. I'm putting them up on Facebook if anybody wants to watch, <laughs> to watch. And they're them. wonderful. They're wonderful. Yeah. yeah. But um, when the pandemic ends and I can get around, I, I'd like to get back to that question of how they're going to how they're financing things. The government has started financing some parts of it that were not being done before. Um, but something happened about making something a national treasure or a national skill folk. Right, right, right. Um, last year, December the 14th, um, UNESCO designated Japan's traditional uh, building crafts, and this includes uh, quite a lot of building crafts, and, but includes thatch and also uh, harvesting thatch were uh, made, what is it, intangible cultural world heritage. This is something that a, a lot of people worked for very yeah. hard to get that. Might that be another source of, of financing? World heritage status is not a, a source of financing. <laughs> OK. It's, it's a great not... honor. It's a lot of advertising. But it is not a source of finance. Okay. The only Thanks. thing is that it kind of forces the government to finance things. Yeah. So, okay. And uh, that is happening slowly. Okay. Okay. Bobby, when we were in Korea, uh, they they started to do away with the thatched houses, and there was a big hue and cry about how aesthetic they were. And Park Chung-hee, the, the, that great president who knows everything, said anybody who's lived in a grass house, a thatched house, would not want to live in one. Um, what's the feeling? Would you want to live in a thatched house if you, didn't, if, if you didn't have to pay for it? If I didn't have to pay for it, I'd be delighted. So yeah. what, what are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Um, the disadvantages are that you have to keep the, the roof maintained. Okay, and of course, you have to be careful about fire. That's a, that's a big problem. Um, the cost of getting it rethatched is prohibitive. I mean, you can, you can build a new house for the cost of rethatching a roof. Um, the advantage is it's, it's the feeling of living under this. I can't really explain. You know, do you remember the word ki? I think it's ki in Japanese to, and in Korean too. That uh, feeling, atmosphere mm -hmm. uh, of the space that's enclosed by the thatch. It's different. I, 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 lo I love staying when I when I go to Tokayama. I stay in a in a thatched house. I, I stay on the second floor. You're not supposed to have guests up there. I say that I'm an exception <laughs> because I, I, I like being in that room. It, it feels so nice. It's relaxing. The thatch uh, insulates well. It's it? good insulation. Yes. It yes. Is. Uh, but the Japanese will say, "Well, I used to live in a thatched house when I was a kid. It was cold and dirty." Well, it doesn't need to be cold and dirty. <laughs> And the cold and dirty doesn't have anything to do with thatch, really. But the, in people's, the common mind, that's, a, that's how thatch is thought of. Because uh -huh. the houses were built um, with cracks everywhere. The, 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 the thatched houses in Gokayama used to have 
spaces like an inch wide between the floorboards. <laughs> you know, you get draft, it's cold. But now, you know, if you renovate the inside, it doesn't need to be cold. I've never been cold in a thatched house. And it doesn't need to be dirty if you don't let it, let it get dirty, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, but, but when you say, what are the advantages of it? It's That's um, feeling. <laughs> I stayed in a choga chip for a few nights in Korea, and they were really warm. It, it wasn't cold at all. Yeah, I could imagine. Yeah. yeah. They also, they have, the, the Korean houses have what, the clay walls, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Fine. Sounds good. Bobby, can I wonder, I was wondering if there are any novels or collections of poems about thatched houses or making them? It just seems to be such a fascinating subject. Not, I don't know. There may be, but I've never heard of them. Uh -huh. um, Bobby? Yeah. I remember when we went to Korea, there it, somewhere in our training, or maybe once we got to country, there was talk about how the thatched roof um, was a place for rats to be and congregate and procreate. And uh, that this was terrible for the um, economy because so much was eaten by uh, the rats. Is there any kind of rat consideration in the Japanese um, situation? Yeah, the, uh, rats would love to live in the roof if you didn't keep a snake or two. <laughs> It didn't keep the snake or two. <laughs> in your <laughs> roof? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back to the, the snakes live in the roof. Oh, my goodness. Well, why not? I, fact, one of, my, one of my, my Thatcher friends, just two or three days ago, working with his bare hands to take down an old roof, he had this poisonous snake all around, <laughs> curled around his arm. <laughs> my, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. You don't eat the snake, the snake will eat the rats. Yeah. So that, yeah, that, but of course you get, but in Korea, you didn't need to have thatch to have rats in the roof. <laughs> That's had, true. Well, but, it, but it did <laughs> really <laughs> help. I mean, thatch, it really did help. Thatch, <laughs> thatch roofs were a source <laughs> of, of vermin tended to get into them. There's no question about that. I'm sure, I'm sure. Jim Wilson down in Masan, uh, while sleeping on his back, had a rat. He'd hear them all the time. Uh, well, but those rat, were in all kinds of groups, not just, not just thatch roofs. Right, <laughs> right. right. But, but anyway, rats rats that, a rat fell through the ceiling, and he could feel all four paws hit his Ooh. chest. Yes, I can. I get it. I get it. <laughs> it it gives you pause, doesn't it? <laughs> when you said that the when they had open hearth cooking and open hearth heating and they the thatch lasted a lot longer, was it because the smoke did kind of anti? It was a pesticide. It was a vermin repellent. Um, it was a preservative, maybe. Yes, both, both, both. Um, <clears throat> it, it would help. It would help to keep vermin and insects out of the material, and uh, it coats it with the, with the, you know the smoke. Yes, and it helps preserve it. Carbon. You you also said uh, maybe when you were talking about the Korea that when the top layer began to deteriorate. They replaced it. Yeah. Um, did they replace it by removing and then replacing, or did they just put a new one on top? In Korea? Yeah. Um, I I'm not sure. They would not, they would take off the old layer and put on a new one. Just the top layer. Yeah. They would take off the top layer and put on a new one. Yes. Uh. Charlie, do you know how often they did that? Um. Pretty often, I think every every a few years, uh, three four years, something like that. Okay, 
it didn't I last very long. Not no, 20 no. years yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Uh, rice straw doesn't it's last. Certainly nothing like 20 years. Yeah, no. Rice straw doesn't last. And that's why the, the, the grasses that I showed you will last. It's, it's high maintenance. In Korea, yeah. But it, it is anywhere. <laughs> and in Japan, if you get a section of the roof where it's starting to go. And what you should do is open up that section and add some more, just as they were doing what, what I showed you when they were coming down the roof and adding extra thatch in places that hadn't got quite enough. But to repair a roof, you can do, use the same technique. Pull, up, you know, pull out what's starting to go bad and add new. And if that's done regularly, you don't need to re-thatch the whole roof. And there's some areas where that is the way they re-thatch. That's every year they just repair. And they, they, they rarely re-thatch an entire roof in some places. I wonder if most Japanese these days, if you were to ask them uh, <laughs> what kind of a house they'd like to live in, what, what, how they would respond in terms of whether a, a more traditional type of structure or something more modern. What do you think? I think it depends who you're asking. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But uh... um, There are some people who are interested in living in thatched houses, yes. Mm -hmm. And this is what Kobe, Kobe has put out a booklet about an inch thick on how to how you could, might be able to use a thatched house, how to select the house that you would want for your purpose, what uh, renovation might be needed, what laws you have to be careful about and, and meet the qualifications to pass that particular law. Mm. It, 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 it's fantastic. That's the the, now, these would be people, though, who would have some wealth, some money to be able to do that, right? Most yes. ordinary people uh, would not be able to afford such a thing. Exactly. Sounds like from what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's very, very, very expensive right now. It used, you know, it used to be the community would get together and thatch the, all the houses in the community. And only in the cities, like in, in, in Tokyo, please, they, they, where they had, had more money, could they afford to have professional thatchers come and thatch a house? Those, that thing I showed you in uh, Western Tokyo. So I wonder if in Kobe, for example, there's a certain amount of prestige attached to having a having a thatched house. You know, well, it's it getting to be shows like that, that you have. There is okay. Yeah. Because this, that's what happened in England. Now, now having living in a thatched house is tremendously prestigious, and mm. some very large, very fancy houses. But they're also just in the community. I was amazed. I walk around my. I have a friend there that I stayed with, and walking around her neighborhood, oh, there's a thatched house, <laughs> and there's another one. And they're working on one, they're going to show me, you know, I mean, go into the site and get them to show me what they were doing. But um, in Japan, you won't find them in towns. It's not allowed. Unless it was originally thatched. You can't, you can't build a new thatched house in a town. Bobby, the, the photo that you have up now, the roof looks like it has uh, grass and weeds. Yes. It's growing all over it. Yes. Is, am I seeing that correctly? Yes. Is that right. roof at a point, would it have to be completely replaced to save it? Um, I would say from the looks of this that it needs a rethatching, yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I hope they have the money to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but if not, it'll get can yeah. yeah. Recently, a, a similar roof was uh, in the in this area was redone. I don't know how much it cost. I, I know who did it, but I don't know. I don't know how much it cost. But um, I imagine pretty expensive. 
it's a complicated roof. Can I ask you about the, the fires? Uh, Japanese, you said it had an open open heating system? Originally, yes. Yeah, but yeah. what about fire? Was that a problem? No, fire was always a problem, yeah. always a problem. And um, this is one reason Japan's fire laws are so strict. Mm -hmm. Whole communities would burn down. You know, the whole okay. village is thatched. Yeah. One house catches fire and uh, the, the, when one thatch catches fire, it blows all over the place. And the walls are wood, right? Well, it depends where you are. Wood, they, some places they're wood, some places they're clay. Um, but if they are wood, of course, they're more flammable. Um, yes, and this, this was a problem in the old days. And I think there's one reason that um, so many thatched houses were lost. Because of fire, because you know you get sparks from stuff or <clears throat> get into the roof. So uh, fire, fire was always a problem, and so, something you had to be very, very careful about. And uh, you know that's true now, and it's true everywhere that has that. Uh, in Europe now, in England at least, they have a, uh, put a board between the thatch and the main part of the house, so that if there's a house fire, it doesn't immediately go to the roof. And if there's a roof fire, it doesn't immediately get into the house. <clears throat> but in England has a problem because they have chimneys uh -huh. and the roofs. And apparently they don't take off the original layers. They, they thatch over the top of that so that for hundreds of years, the thatch around these chimneys has built up. And that, then they get a thatch fire around the chimney. And now, of course, they, they're making flashing and, and doing other things to prevent that from happening. But the old houses, it's a real problem. We don't Thank you so much, Bobby. It's a car. Who said what? I, I said thank you. I, Bonnie Hurley said thank you well, so thank much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, it was just, I wouldn't have missed it. It, it. And I just hope you, after COVID, you can keep on with doing something more with this publishing, a picture book, well, interviewing more. Or I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know what I'll be doing. I, really, well, I honestly don't know. Um, okay. This might be your finished project. Yeah, my well, Facebook maybe maybe my yeah project. yeah okay yeah anyway but thank uh, you very much. Well, thanks, thank Bobby. You. It was really fascinating. Was great, great. Yeah. It certainly is. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone for listening. <laughs> really interesting. So I think our next uh, presentation is uh, two weeks. Uh, later, uh, and that's uh, Ed Klein. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, good. And uh, Ed, are are uh, are we going to practice a little bit uh, for screen sharing? Uh, we, yes, we'll try to practice somehow. Of course, I have to get it uh, okay. to a point where we are going to gain something by practicing it. Okay, let me know when. I give two sentences of uh, advanced advertising for it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Okay, sure. so uh, this is basically my uh, dissertation, which was completed just before I went off to uh, Korea again to go to uh, Sogang University. And therefore, um, I really haven't said that much about this dissertation, um, but it's about four Korean kids uh, who were born and raised in Korea. In their teenage years, they came to uh, a part of Honolulu that was um, an entry place for, for uh, immigrants. And uh, I went to their school and I sat with them through various classes and then we did various things after school while I was taping them. I taped them over four years and four months uh, in order to see how their language uh, was acquired. And that 
by the way, is what 